Waters flowing down from the peaks are the result of the annual rainfall, which comes in the form of snow during most of the year. The snow falling onto the peaks is deposited in glacial valleys. As it accumulates, it is transformed into ice and begins its descent, at which time the glacial tongues peppering the Alaskan orography are formed. The glaciers are living structures in perpetual motion. The ice from these glaciers may move anywhere from a few meters per year up to 50 or 60 meters a day. The movement causes strong tension which erodes the landscape and fragments the glacial tongue from which great blocks of ice break off. The permanent erosion of these powerful frozen masses slowly but inexorably changes the topology of the landscape. The fjords on the southern coast of Alaska are striking testimony to this sculpting force. Most geologists believe that the fjords were formed by the action of the glaciers, which cut deep valleys into the shore, which were later filled with water when the sea level rose. In the beginning, many fjords were the river estuaries which were made deeper by the glaciers. The fjords are the maximum expression of the richness and variety of Alaska's wild nature. Their nutrient-rich waters support the development of an ecological pyramid where whales and porpoises, salmon, otters and seals live together in a delicate ecological balance. Unfortunately, the fjords are another example of the risk to which Alaska's virgin nature is exposed as a result of man's industrial activity. When in 1867, the North American Secretary of State, William H. Seward, negotiated the purchase of Alaska from the Russians for $7,200,000, people called this land Seward's Madness. Today, this madness produces six billion barrels of oil, which is transported through the Alaskan pipeline from Prado Bay to the port of Valdez, where the first oil tanker put into port in July of 1977. It did not take long for the flourishing oil industry to show its negative potential. On the 24th of March, 1989, the Exxon Valdez, a theoretically safe oil tanker, ran aground in Prince William Sound, dumping 35,000 tons of crude, which reached as far as 900 kilometers away, killing the fjord's wildlife, including 3,500 otters, 350,000 seafowl, and millions of fish and aquatic invertebrates. Today, almost 10 years later, life has returned to the fjords and the fishing industry, more ecological and traditional than the oil industry, is once again reaping the fruits of these waters. But many years will be necessary for recovering the ecosystem's natural richness. The fishing and forest industry are the two pillars of the state's economy, which are directly dependent on nature. Several fishing villages in the fjords live on the salmon they fish, and therefore on the ecological health of the water and marine birds. It was only thanks to government assistance that they were able to survive the years following the Exxon Valdez tragedy, and even today, they note that the ecosystem has not fully recovered.
When the base of the ecological chain is damaged, the entire system suffers the consequences. The most visible animals, such as fish or fowl, return gradually. But without the bases of the food pyramid, their populations decrease, and the animals are weaker and less developed. Alaska is privileged to have a low population density. Its more than one and a half million square kilometers are home to a population of about one million inhabitants, of whom 8% are Eskimos, 6% are Merindians, and 2% are Aleuts. It is therefore one of the last virgin territories where nature is still seen in its wild state. But it is a fragile paradise floating amidst a great oil reserve, making its future dependent on man carrying out the correct actions. It will be necessary for an understanding and appreciation of the incalculable ecological value of this land to take precedence over quick economic profits in order for Alaska to continue as the final frontier for future generations. <laughs>